Welcome to another edition of Tech Talk. I am Aaron, your local Ranky serviceman with Rain for Rent. Today we're going to be covering our electric valves. Um, they range from anywhere from four to six to eight is generally what we use for irrigation purposes. Today what I want to cover is how to diagnose a problem with the, uh, the Skinner valve or the solenoid that controls this electric valve through the auto switch of your pivot. Um, to begin with, I want just to do a quick overlook. You just want to make sure when you're looking at your electric valve, there's nothing out of whack. You have uh, no cracks in the bonnet here, no cracks in the iron. All of our brass fittings are correct. It's plumbed in correctly. Because a lot of people will have some problems at the first of the season and say that their electric valve is not working, but they forget that there is a brass valve here on the inlet side that needs to be turned open in order for this to correctly work. Now once you've gotten that open and you know that you have water flowing in here and it's still not uh, working correctly off of your pivot panel, we want to take a look and diagnose if it's the Skinner valve on here. The Skinner valve is just a normally open, normally closed uh, contact that uh, runs through the, the switch of the electric valve. Um, it is electronically controlled, usually by your pivot point, can be other means as well. In order to be able to diagnose that, what you will need is a multimeter. We recommend a class three or better multimeter because you will be working with 480 volts possibility inside of your panel. Here it should be 120 volts that controls the Skinner valve. Um, and before we take the, te the steps to test this, we do recommend that you lock and tag out your system to make sure that there is no electricity or any potential current that can come into your electric valve. So make sure that you're safe first. Once you've gotten to that point and you've got your Skinner valve isolated so that there's no current or electricity coming to it, we're gonna go ahead and take our multimeter. All of them have generally the same uh, type of functions. We're going to move it to ohms and that will allow us to be able to read the ohms on the Skinner valve. Generally these Skinner valves are right around 180 to down to 168 ohms, anything below 165, generally is saying that we have a problem with that Skinner valve and it needs to be replaced. What you do with your leads, you'll have one red and one black. It does not matter which side you put it on. Just put one lead to each wire, make sure they're separated, and then you want to read out the ohm reading on your multimeter. This solenoid is showing at 182 ohms, so this is a good new solenoid. If it showed below 165, at that point, we would want to go ahead and change out the electric solenoid on this valve. Okay, we have our electric valve here. Um, as you can see here, the hoses are going from the inlet brass valve here. This is just a simple ball valve, open and close. From here, it's going to T into our selector switch, which is in auto, closed or open position. It'll tee from there into the top of the solenoid or the Skinner valve, and this will be your inlet water. And then it'll work through there and then control this auto side through this brass fitting here. In order to take this off, first of all, you wanna take notice of your um, hoses. You wanna make sure that they, you see how they're hooked up so that you can put them back correctly. If you need to, you can take a picture of them with your cell phone to be able to put them back in the right position. In order to do this, you're just gonna push in on the hose, push in on this green tab on this quick connect, and it'll pull out. And you'll do the same thing here and isolate that. Generally what we like to do is I like to take out all these extra drain hoses so they don't get in the way of what we're doing. The tools that we'll need to have with us to accomplish this are gonna be a 7 16 end wrench, a 7 8 inch end wrench, and possibly a pair of channel locks. What I like to do to make this as easy as possible is like take off all of these extra fittings first to get them out of the way. It makes it so they don't break and we can reuse them again and cut down the cost of, of changing this out. It is a little bit of a um, cumbersome to get this breast valve out and you have to be super careful because this brass is, is a little bit fragile and can strip and break off, especially in the first of spring after it's been frozen all winter long. Make sure you keep track of all those fittings. You don't wanna to have to go buy new ones because they are not cheap. Once I've got all those fittings off, we're gonna use a 7 8 
end wrench to be able to grab at the base of the selector switch so that you're not getting onto these upper brass fittings that could break off while you're taking it or you're disassembling it. And we want to get just below there and slowly turn that so we can get that loosened up and pull that off easily. It spins out rather quickly. And we now have the selector switch and the solenoid disassembled from the bonnet cap. Once we have the selector switch taken apart, we now have isolated the Skinner valve. You can take apart these um, quick connect fittings and replace them on the Skinner valve. Since this one was already new, I just wanted to show you how to take off the selector valve and, and the Skinner valve in order to isolate it and change it out. We're going to go ahead and put it back together. The thing that you want to make notice of is on the Skinner valve, you'll have these ports are numbered. At the top is three. On the side is one and two. We're going to be using for the auto the, uh, the automatic function of the Skinner valve, port three for our inlet and then port two for our outlet. And that's what's going to control into this selector switch to be able to use this into the auto function. One thing you want to make notice is when we put it back together on the top here, there is an open, there is a close or an auto and a close. Whichever way the arrow is pointing is the direction or the function that this selector switch will do. So we want to put this back into the auto port here. And we want to spin that back on. Generally, we want to use a little bit of pipe dope to make sure that we have a good secure fitting. We want that on as tightly as possible there. And I recommend that you use good channel locks and also um, uh, some box end wrenches. But make sure not to over tighten it because you can strip out uh, some of those threads. Once we've gotten into this position, it's ready to go back onto our bonnet cap here. And we're just going to tighten that down. There. Once again, make sure it's tight, but not over tightened or stripped or broke. And now we can start to reassemble all of our hoses on here. We made sure to keep all of our quick connects. We're going to replace their T. We can then put our hose from the inlet ball valve into the top of the T. We can then replace our hose into the top of the Skinner valve and into the other side of the T. And then all we have left from here are our drain hoses. And then we can hook it back up into our system. And we have a new Skinner valve attached onto the electric valve here. Once again, just make sure all your hoses are correct, that your ball valve is turned on on the side here. And that allows for proper function. And that's how we change out a Skinner valve. Thanks for joining us, folks.